Welcome back to another Shades of Blue podcast. I have with me Coach Nagamura from Sporting Kansas City 2 and Sporting Kansas City legend as a player. How are you today, Coach? Well, good. Good. Thank you, Ted. Uh, it's been, it's been a, a, a short, long season <laughs> without this pandemic, but I think we, we survived and uh, uh, it was a very positive year. Uh, you know, you're, you you led right into my first question, obviously, is overall, what do you think of how the team performed? I mean, it, it obviously a very tough year, not the way you want things to go by overall record, but all things considered, the team, I thought, played pretty well. Which, what did you think? I agree. I agree with you. I think, um, I mean, a short season, like I say, uh, 15 games, 14 games on the road, uh, 12 of those games against three teams that you could probably uh, tell them that they were favorites to be in playoffs and favorites to win the USL, uh, USL Cup. So with, with all the, with all the, uh, the things considered, I think in terms of playing and performances as, uh, as a team collectively, I think the team did really well. Uh, I think um, maybe two out of the, the, the 15 games were games that we were completely out of it. We were, we were, we were, we were not in a game. We were, we were games that were probably we, we didn't came out ready to play or we were lacking some, some, something here and there. That was the game against Austin and the games against Louisville that we lost it. But other than that, other 13 games were games that we were we, – we were there. We were, we were competing head to head with the the, the, the bigger teams, the teams that are the, the better teams in, in, the, in the conference. Uh, teams like I like I say again, teams that are competing probably to you win uh, the cup at the end of the year. So in terms of uh, collective and team performance, I think uh, it was a very very positive year. And as we've spoke before, this team is really about providing fodder for providing players to the first team uh feeding that team i mean I, of course you always want to win you always want to to go compete but uh how did you see the growth of some of the young guys this year well uh i think it was very very uh evident uh in games like if you compare uh Kavi Rad, for example from last year to this year if you compare jake davis from last year to this year, if you compare Brooks Thompson from last year to this year, so you you see an enormous uh, amount of uh, development on those kids, and do that that development is due to playing those kind of games, those t- those tough games against tough opponents uh, that we had this year, the experience that they had, uh, uh, the. Only the experience that they, they had it playing those games just make them grow so much. Of course, training sessions, playing on a on a on a on a on a high level a division, uh, playing with uh, more quality players around them, make them better players as well. But uh, absolutely, I think the development uh, the development of those young guys this year has been is been very very good. Uh, I think. The club, the club should be pleased with it, and that's what we we're here for, right? We're we're trying to push those guys to 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 someday be MLS players, and uh, that's that's what we're trying to do here. I know you may not name names, but do you think any of those guys have uh, earned a first team contract this year with the, with the way they played? I mean, it's not it's not it's not up to me to 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 decide. I think we we have our guy, our leader, Peter Vermees, who. Who follow those players on daily basis? Uh, he knows everyone. Uh, he knows what, how they're doing, what their struggles, what their strengths. So uh, it, it's not it's out it's out of it's out of my hands. What I can say, uh, a lot of those guys, uh, a lot of those guys did very well this year, and I'm sure I'm sure Peter and, and his staff are aware of of, of those performances. So um, I know you mentioned a few of those guys. Um, how about Wilson Harris? Did uh, he was you know great scorer last year, good scorer, great scorer this year? Um, has he, did he take a did he take another step this year along with some of those other young guys? Absolutely, I think Wilson is it's been it's been evolving every year, uh, and this year 
he show another step uh, further in in his development. I think he he got much better playing between the lines. We know we know the qualities that Wilson will bring to the team. He's a he's a goal scorer. He's a he's a he, he smells the goals. He he's gonna if he has a chance he's gonna bury it. Um, so we know what Wilson brings to the to the to the team. But I agree, uh, and I I, I think Wilson. Uh, develop as well. He's evolved. Uh, he got much better on in some of the things that he wasn't as good last year. And again, uh, a kid that scored 20 goals in USL level prior to his 20th 20th birthday. I, if I'm, I'm not, I don't know if I'm correct on the on the. On I the believe statute, you are, sir. Yes. It, it's pretty impressive, right? It's it's impressive. So. Like I said before, he, he's making himself aware to, to the first team staff and, and, and to the club. So, uh, again, he's doing, what he, he, he's doing what he's supposed to do in order to get a chance with the first team, right? If, if, he, if he's going to get that chance or not, it, it, like, like I say, it's out of, our, it's out of our, my hands. But, I, again, uh, it's, it, he's definitely making, making the case for himself and, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that Peter Vermees is aware of it. <clears throat> well, yeah, I'm quite sure Peter is also. Um, I know there's a lot of things you can teach players, but you can't really teach them that nose for the goal. I mean, they, they seem to either have it or they don't. And he, he does seem to have it. So. Absolutely. Uh, another young guy we didn't mention, but who's already on a first team contract is Freeman. How did he develop? I mean, I know last year he was really young and seemed like he, just needed to maybe find his space with the team and uh, opportunities. And this year he got a lot more opportunity. How did he grow? Absolutely. I think Freeman was the same thing, right? When he came to us, uh, he was probably not fit enough to play uh, full games. He wasn't fit to play games. So we tried to slowly build him up and, and give him uh, experiences, playing time. And again, he he's another guy that... Uh, he has evolved so much throughout this year, just with being with us, being uh, the entire time with us, training, uh, playing games, being consistent on, on the lineup. Uh, but also, he he was consistent because he, for most of the most of the times, he played well, right? And we we have to consider the kid is only 17 years old, right? Yeah. We we can't. It, it, one thing is development. The other thing is that you have to consider that we have to be patient with those young guys. Yes, we want to push them to the first team. We want to make them first team players and impactful players to the first team. But there's kids that probably develop slower than the others, and 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 we have to be patient. You know, every every player, every 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 person has a single uh, time to 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 develop and and to evolve and. We we gotta make sure that we we're not pushing too fast those kids, okay, and being too critical on them because they they have quality. So we just have to make sure that we put them in the right right environment and make sure that we 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 maximizing their chances to succeed when when they play where they're playing. And again, Freeman is a, is another example of that. He he is slowly graduate, got playing time. He he shows the enormous. Uh, signs of talent when he is playing. Um, yes, he does need to work on a few things defensively on his tactical uh, awareness of positioning. Uh, but but the kid has talent, and he, yeah. he, you saw in um, especially in the last few games that we played during the season, he can give the final pass. He's very creative on the final third. So uh, we just have to be patient with those guys who are making sure that we we're putting them on the right on the right environment to succeed. Well, yeah, that, there was definitely no criticism there of him. It was just the curiosity of what you were seeing because these guys are getting games when they're 17, 18, 19, 20 that, you know, guys going to college wouldn't have been getting, you know, previously. So it, it is fun for me watching the difference of these guys versus, you know, the guys who went to college, you know, in the last few decades that how I think they're developing. So that's, that's, always, always, that's why it's always a curiosity for me how you guys see some of these players because I think it's fun watching them grow. Absolutely, and that this is what we—that's what we we're trying to do here, right? We're trying to make those young guys better players, and that—that's the—that's the, the entire project, the entire plan. Yeah, uh, I mean, we've—I've seen players come in on academy contracts, and obviously, 
over their head and then you know the next year they come in and, and get a little to more time and they're catching up on the speed of playing with adults and you know now some of them are getting consistent time with the first team you know so it's I, I expect several of those guys we've mentioned I say I expect I hope to see several of those guys we've mentioned getting getting their opportunities when they're you know another year or two so absolutely and I think we 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 all aware of everyone right we are aware we are not trying to uh, hurry those guys right um but we are aware of everyone that we have here in academy in the club so we got to make sure that uh, looking up you know what we have in the first team we're 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 not taking time and space of other players as well so we're we're trying to maximize everyone's potential to 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 flourish well you're almost going to need two teams with so many academy kids now right yeah, absolutely. Uh, the academy is doing such a great job in producing players, and we, we as a as a second team, have to make sure that we keep up with that and make sure that we we're, we're uh, not only assessing and making the right choices, the right uh, decisions to give those kids opportunities and 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 playing time. Yeah, I mean, you've uh, you had some of the the actual academy kids stepping in this year, like Caden Pierre and uh, a couple other ones. Did, played well. Uh, LaFleur, for I think, was one of them. Uh, even a couple of guys who went off to college and stayed around to help you guys out, like uh, Rad and Mason Leith, I believe. Um, so it's just interesting to see all those guys still around and helping out and contributing. And, you know, I, I thought some of them played really, really well in there. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I can say right now, it was very, it was very evident for, for us. Uh, and again, I, I don't like to to speak about individuals. I always say that because right. it's, uh, it, it's not fair, right? Uh, I think they you can give the assessment now, but uh, when Caden Pierre stepped on the field uh, against Austin, against Indy, and against Louisville, who were very three difficult games, it felt natural to him. It yeah. was it was he 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 already belonged. I don't want to say belong, but it was, he felt comfortable playing in that environment. And that's a very, very good sign of a young player, right? Uh, some players feel a little bit more pressure, feel a lot not, not as comfortable. But when you see guys that can perform on tough, tough situations like that, because they're playing against those 17, 16, 17, 18 years old, they're playing against men. They're playing against 30, 35-year-olds. Yeah. Guys that played in, in big teams in Brazil, in Europe, uh, maybe qualify World Cup. So it's not, it's not easy. So uh, when guys uh, at that such a young age step on the field and, and you can sense and feel that that's natural for them, that's a very good sign. It's a very good sign, and we uh, there's a couple of guys that, are, that showed that this year, and we we're we're really pleased with their performances. Yeah, and you know, I've mostly because I only got to see what three games in person, two two here and one in St. Louis, so mostly having to watch from the screen. But I got that sense that, especially for Pierre, but some of those other guys were. I, I want to see what they do the next year. I want to see how much time they get. And, you know, that's obviously decisions you guys have to make and figure it out. Um, hopefully everything goes better next year, but, you know, hope to see more of those guys. Um, we've talked all about pretty much young guys. Uh, I don't want to call him old, but an old guy, uh, Dylan Serna, he, he, I think he played every game and um, played really well. I mean, I know he's had, you know, a, about 100 MLS games under his belt, but he, he seemed like he stepped in and was a, kind of a big leader for the team. Absolutely. Okay. And look, I want to make this clear. So it's uh, because we want to play the young guys, right? right? And if we don't have guys like Christian Duke, Dylan Serna, okay, uh, this team doesn't do as well as they did this year, right? In, uh, in my opinion, okay, in my opinion, I think the younger guys need some 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 leadership. Some older guys have have that have experienced the highest level this of this game here in the United States to kind of help them along, right? Yep. Uh, and help them grow because if you if you feel, to be honest, on my opinion, if you feel a team with 17, 18 years old on a league like that, on a high league like that, and USL championship. 
it's really, really difficult to get results, okay? And we, when you don't get results, those young guys, they start getting frustrated. And that, in my opinion, doesn't help the development of those kids. They need to experience wins. They need to experience victories. They need to experience success in games, okay? So with that being said, Dylan Serna was really solid, solid for us, right? If, he, if he's not there, maybe, I'm not saying that he is the only, but we need guys like that oh, yeah. to make the, the to make the 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 to make the team stronger, to bring uh, veteran leadership, to bring uh, uh, players that through tough times can deal with situations that maybe young guys cannot yet. So again, Dylan was very solid, uh, very solid as a left back for us this year. Uh, he was a player that. Uh, he wasn't a left back before we, we we played him there because we believe we we, we could him we could uh, develop his skills to play in that position maybe uh, looking uh, in the future to maybe help with the first team so um, I think he made his case on on that position this year and and hopefully uh, we we help him uh, get where he wants to be. Oh well, yeah, no. Trust me, I I thought he played really well, and I I understand you need that leadership in there, and also it helps to have, uh, you know, some veteran guys who, if the first team needed a call up, I mean, you you probably wouldn't call up Caden Pierre to go play in MLS Cup if you needed to sign a guy at the last minute. You know, um, you might call Serna up to do that because he's got that experience. Um, so yeah, that's we. I think that's part of the benefit of having this team is you can have some of those veterans there that might be able to step up and play at that level without putting them in a bad pitch situation. So no, it's, it's all positive. Each year there's usually a fair amount of turnover for the team. You know, some of the guys who are brought in as um, non-academy people to try out or to see how they do. Would, I, again, I, I don't expect you to name names, but you expect a lot of turnover this year or maybe because it was a short year that maybe some more of those guys stick around to see how they do in the future. Well, this year, in terms of, I'd say, it was, it was really difficult because there was no movement of players. Okay. Right. And I feel I feel uh, that a lot of players, even on the first team, could get much more playing time, and they didn't because of this pandemic protocols that we have now, and the movement of players is so hard. Like Cameron Duke, for example, he could have a lot of games this year with us, right? Uh, Felipe is doing well with the first team, so he could be another one. Cousin, probably another one. Yeah. Right? Jay Lindsay could be another one. Even Puskamp, who played a couple of games, he could probably play more. Uh, so with this pandemic, the, the movement of players made so difficult for for the for the the for the movement of players. And that affect uh, definitely affect the development of this, the, those guys on the first team. I think and it happened the same thing with the, the academy. We could we couldn't um, move players up and down because of the protocols, so it was a little harder. Uh, and then yes, it, it, we we tried to cope with that the best way we can we could, right? We, we try to maximize our 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 our, uh, our opportunities to give guys chances and playing time and assessment, and and. We try to do our best. Uh, hopefully, next year it goes back to normal, and we can we can have those uh, player movement more frequent and more often, and and we go back to normal. Cool. Um, all right. So now on a little more relaxed side, I guess. Um, a lot of players swap jerseys after games. Have you done that? And what's your favorite one? Uh, back in the day when I was playing, you mean? Yeah, well, I, I haven't really seen coaches swap jerseys. So, I, I, yeah, back when you were playing. <laughs> do, do coaches swap jerseys? Uh, it, it's, it was weird because it's, it's, it's been a, a long time since I've been asked a question about playing, playing time. So that's why I asked. Uh, <laughs> it, yes, I, I mean, I used to, I used to uh, swap jerseys with guys that I, that I played with, um, like former teammates that I have. I always – used to swap but there's one guy there's one jersey that I always remember that uh that was fun to swap it was a game that I was playing um uh, LA Galaxy against Real Madrid in 2005 and and 
I had the privilege to to swap jerseys with uh, uh, a Real Madrid player. So um, that's a jersey that I always kept on my locker, on my in my in my home because it's, it was a special one. Do, do you have any of them up in a you know a wall someplace or in your house or? No, no. The only one that I have in my house is a Sporting KC jersey. Uh, the most important one for now. Yeah. So uh, let's keep that way. I think it's working. <laughs> cool. Um, still, when you were a player, uh, you know, a lot of guys listen to music before the game to get them hyped up, get them calm, whatever it was. Is there something that you listen to, to, to make you a better player? Was it to, to, to get you more pumped? Was it to get you more Zen like? What was it? I wouldn't say better player, but until even until now, I'm as a coach. Uh, I always like to to listen to samba prior to games, and like when I was playing, of course, in a locker room prior to to the game, or or when I'm home preparing, showering, or whatever I'm doing, I always I always like to 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 listen to samba. So uh, Brazilian music is in is in is in my blood. So I I always try to to have that. Uh, prior to to a big game even 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 when i'm coaching cool um do you, do you pump it into the locker room or do they get to listen to their own stuff no no in the locker room <laughs> in the locker room is business so uh they they do their own music uh we have to prepare for the game so the music is only uh when i'm home uh when i'm heading to the to the game or when i'm in the bus uh traveling but in the locker room it's it's business cool um after games what did you have a, a way to relax or you know do you have a favorite beverage you drank or was it more music or just getting away from the game or watching tape or what what was your what was your go-to activity after a game that you played playing right yeah yeah because i gotta i gotta imagine that's a little different now playing uh well I never really like to drink too much after games just because you get so uh, dehydrated or you, you get so exhausted that you need to fill your body with water and, and fluids. So I never like to drink alcohol after games. Um, so I had a, a pretty healthy, healthy routine after games. Um, but yeah, it, it, my mood, um, to be honest with you, my mood it was always depending on the on the result of the game. If we we if we won, it was a happy happy night. It was a <laughs> it was a good mood around. There was laughs and everything. But when when we had losses or ties, uh, I was a very moody moody player. Yeah, I can understand that. Even the the fan side of me is there too. So. Um. <laughs> Do you, do you get to maybe enjoy the beverage now that you're a coach? You don't have to rehydrate. Uh, maybe a little bit more than prior, yeah. but not as much. To be honest with you, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a, a big fan of that after games. No, I understand. Um, I was wondering because I didn't. You know, the season's been over for you guys a little bit now, and going into playoffs, uh, is there any like teams that you? maybe you're pulling for or do you think who do you who do you think will win the the usl championship and and are you kind of rooting for one of them i mean i know you want to be there yourself obviously no i'm not rooting for anyone but from what i watch it uh from what uh, uh the saints that i that i have i think in our conference louisville is gonna is gonna be is gonna be up there they're gonna have to play st louis now who is a team that uh Let's be honest. We 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 gave them an extra life, uh, yep. beating Windy, and gave them uh, extra life them to to go to the playoffs. But it's gonna be a difficult game. But I think at the end, I think Louisville has a better uh, overall team, and they're playing at home, so I think they're probably gonna be favorites. But I don't I don't run St. Louis out because they're they're in a good momentum, and you, you know when when teams. Uh, find themselves in a playoff like that uh, in a very difficult uh, situation. They can gain momentum and they can gain uh, confidence, and that's a big boost for St. Louis as well. But 
I think in our conference, uh, 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 those two teams are very, very in a strong uh, run right now. Can they can they go all the way to the final? You think? I think so. I think well, they're they're in the same final right now, so one of those two guys will be in a in a fi- in a conference final. So uh, they're two games away from the final. I, I would yep. say in our conference, I think Louisville. I I, I think Louisville has a better chance because yeah. they're playing at home. No, I, I would agree. Although I, I am sentimentally rooting for St. Louis because it is their last year. Just you know, they got their first. Uh, postseason win so their first playoff win and that's with with the season over I wasn't sure maybe if you'd already uh taken off on vacation but I can see you're not <laughs> no our 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 2021 season already started right we are already working for next year we are uh we're keeping assessing the academy players on more often now on daily basis uh so our season May have the games may have ended, but uh, the planning and the the the, the assessment and the the, the next year's um, uh, building roster and and planning already started. So uh, we're here, we're here and ready to go again. So uh, you you sounded almost excited for that, like next year. I mean, are you like, do you have uh, any big plans you can share, or just more of the uh, you got very quiet I'm, there, Coach. I'm excited because, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm excited because uh, the core, the core. let's put it this way, the core of our team that is being the, the academy players, the homegrown players, uh, are really, really good. So this, there's, if, if there's one reason for, for me to be excited for next year is that this is it. We, we have a, a very good uh, uh, players uh, on first team, right, homegrown, we have a lot of promising players on a second team, but we also have a, a lot of few players, uh, a lot of players, sorry, uh, on the 1917s that are coming up. So uh, this is exciting. This is exciting for a club that is putting a lot of work on the, on the youth development on the second team and it's, it's paying dividends on the first team. You see that players are getting more and more time and and they're contributing for for uh, the first team to win games. So th- this is this is exciting times here to be in this club. Uh, and I agree from the from the outside looking in. It's I, like I said, I, I, that's why I always like to talk to you. And I'm very excited about how the academy is providing players to you guys and going up. And I, one thing I love about Felipe Hernandez is that he he's that kid that played in the academy and uh, played for Swope Park and and just got a ton of games in there and now has been called on at the first team to perform a lot. And I could see him playing a lot in the, the near future for them. Um, and I think he's just that, that role model for more and more kids to say, yeah, that's how I can do it. Sign with the second team and work their way through. Um, anything else I should have been smart enough to ask you today, coach? Your questions are really, really smart. Dad. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think a lot of people would necessarily agree with that, but I try. Um, all right. Well, thanks for joining me. I appreciate the time and I will hopefully talk to you sometime before the next season starts.